It's mid-February and it's gonna be a busy riding season of creating content. I wanna make sure all the bikes that I have are ready to go. I need to make sure that the mods are done, that if it's not running, I need to make sure it's running if it needs repairs, if the bike is set up for the way I want to ride it. Plus, I still want time to ride this summer. And I gotta figure out what bikes I wanna to take to the Bubbler Bike Fest. And hey, you're invited to the Bubbler Bike Fest as well. Check out the link in the description if you're all interested in hanging out, camping, riding, and just having a great weekend together. So by the end of this video, I'm gonna come up with a plan for all the bikes that I own. And since I gotta do this anyway, I thought I'd record a video and have you come along, maybe help me out a little bit. Leave some comments below what you think of everything that I'm gonna do, and maybe offer me some advice. <laughs> As I go through the process of coming up with a plan for each one of these bikes, I'm gonna be thinking about three things, and that's skill, time, and money. Those first two are really related. Skill, meaning I'm a noob at some of these things, so I need to do the research, I need to learn how to do the processes. That's gonna take some time. So time is also between now and the time I wanna ride these bikes, come spring. Money is a limiting factor for all of us. All three of those are gonna impact how I decide what I'm gonna do. This is the least amount of bikes I've owned since I've had eight in May of 2018. Cut that in half, so today we're gonna to be talking about four bikes. A 1982 Honda GL500, that's a cafe racer build. A 1987 Yamaha Virago XV535, the 2016 Iron 883 right behind me, and of course the 2021 Honda Africa Twin. I bought this GL500 in February 2018 as a basket case for $300. Fully intend to build it into a cafe racer, and I've done a lot in that process already. I have 11 videos on YouTube now showcasing from the start till right around this stage, just before I painted it. What this bike means to me is a lot of learning on how to wrench on a motorcycle. With this bike, I've done everything from removing old broken bolts to replacing a head, so I've done a ton. Will this bike be at the Bubbler Bike Fest? There's a lot against me even to have this bike running by summer. I have skills and time up against me. There's still some things I need to learn how to do before I do this. I recently picked up some welding skills, so I'm pretty new at that. I need to do some welding on the frame to even make it rideable. I need to buy wheels, brakes, exhaust, or maybe even potentially weld my own exhaust together. I need to paint the frame, I need to paint the tank, and I'm probably gonna repaint this engine as well. I replaced the original forks with this Jixxer 600 fork. It's gonna look really good once I'm done. There's just a lot to do on this. I'm gonna grade this one as a upper low to medium priority on this list, mainly because I'm up against all three, skill, time, and money. I may have higher priorities on my list. Let's go on to another bike. For this one, we'll need to take a field trip. <laughs> This is my 1987 Virago XV535. It's in rough shape. Bought this bike in June of 2018 for a friend. She really loved the looks of the bike when I bought it. I was gonna fix it up for her so she could ride it. She decided not to ride, and I've had this bike ever since. I thought about fixing it up and selling it like I have for some other bikes, but I just never got around to it. So it's kind of sad a little bit. I've done a little bit of work for it. I've cleaned the car. What are you doing? <laughs> you got some stinky breath. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> done a little bit of work to it. I've worked on the carbs. I've taken the tank off. I've cleaned that up. Part of me just wants to turn it into a bobber. Part of me wants to fix up and sell it. Another part of me just wants to sell all the parts off. I haven't really decided. What I do need to decide is once I finish the iron, if this bike is gonna go on the lift or if the Cafe Racer is gonna go on the lift. You're probably gonna let me know in the comments below. So skills, time, and money. This bike is gonna cost me a lot of money to fix. I have the knowledge to fix it, but it's gonna take me a long time to fix it. So this one is a low priority for me. It's probably gonna sit out here for quite a while, but we'll see. this 
channel for any length of time, this next one needs no introduction. This one though is not the 2017, it's a 2016 Harley Iron 883. This one I bought a few weeks ago as a complete emotional purchase. Well, all motorcycles are emotional purchases, but this one though was completely nostalgia for my old 2017. I really want this bike to come to the bubbler with me. Not only does it mean a lot to me, but it means a lot to others watching this channel. It'd be fun to have other riders get on this bike and experience it as I modded the old 2017 out. And that's exactly what I'm doing in a video series right now. Skills, time, and money. Are any of these up against me? Money's not a huge issue. I already have all the parts that I need to mod this bike as I want it. Time is not a huge issue. I have a lot of time to work in the garage. For skills, I am doing a few new things like riveting the fender and knurling the handlebars. These won't take me long to learn and execute, so that's not a huge issue. I'm pretty confident that I'll be able to get this done quickly and this bike will be at the bubbler. I'm gonna label the Iron 883 as a high priority and I'm fairly confident that I will get it done even before the riding season starts. <laughs> The next bike is my 2021 Honda Africa Twin. If you were at the 2019 Midwest Motor Meetup, you know I fell in love with this bike when I sat on the 2019 version of it. It's been my dream bike ever since. What I'm gonna use it for are long distance travel and some light off-roading. I don't want this to turn into a bike review video, but I will say that I feel this bike is underrated, largely due to this parallel twin 1100cc engine. Sure, it doesn't match the power or torque of the bigger adventure bikes, but it falls nicely in between those big adventure bikes and the mid-displacement bikes. And it does exactly what I needed to do. I've done a few things to this bike and I don't need to do too much more with it. It's still in break-in after all. I added the upper and lower crash guards. I added the Tour Tech pannier rack and attached to those I have the Lone Rider soft pannier bags. I also have these handy Lone Rider six liter bags attached to my upper crash guard. At some point this summer, I want to ride the Trans-Wisconsin Adventure Trails. I bought a set of Continental TKC-80s to make it easier for an off-road newbie like me to tackle the Trans-Wisconsin Adventure Trail. The rest of the mods that I'd like to do is not a long list, and the reason why I haven't is largely due to supply chain issues. There's only two. These are simply replacing the stock handguards. These don't offer a whole lot of protection for my hands or for my bike, so I'd like to get a set of bark busters on there. And the other is I'd like to replace the stock foot pegs for a more off-road friendly set. This is my dream bike and I'm gonna ride it a lot this summer. Skills, time, and money are no issue for me completing these last two mods. And I'll hopefully be able to get it done barring the supply chain issues that are happening right now. These are the bikes that I have in the garage right now. Leave me a comment down below and tell me about your bike. And if you're interested in more about these bikes, I've got some things here for you to click. Hey.